Hey, good afternoon, y'all. I'm Donnie, and I'd like to invite you to join me for a pipe and a pour. Welcome back, y'all. Thanks for stopping in for a little bit. Um, it's Mule Town Pipe Show recap time. I'm a little behind the ball, but what else is new, right? Big shout out <clears throat> uh, to Pete and the rest of the folks down there at Briarworks uh, for an amazing show last weekend. Um, wanted to tell you guys all about that, and we'll get into that in just a moment. <laughs> Do a little show and tell. And you'll have to forgive me. I'll tell you the story about why I'm chuckling. Um, we'll get to that as part of the Mule Town Pipe Show. Amazing experience I had and, and the story down there. Uh, today's pipe is, uh, is again, I figure it's only appropriate to bring in the uh, Briarworks 10-year anniversary um, Zulu. I uh, took this with me to the show last weekend. Enjoyed a number of blends, some of them interesting. Again, foreshadowing. Hold your horses, we're gonna get there. Um, and in it this afternoon, one of the spoils from the visit down there. Uh, I am smoking in it. Hope you can see that there, yeah. Margate. Best full English tobacco and a big old jar of it. Look at that. From, uh, where's the date? He didn't put the date on this one. Probably 2012, 2013. We'll get there in a moment. Fantastic, fantastic blend, but it's got some age, so it's mellowed. Today's pour. Look at that. I mean, St. Patty's Day's coming up. So I figured I had to go with the nice Irish style, but this one's different. It's like a meal into itself, but it's like a dessert meal. You should have seen the head on it when I poured it a little bit ago. Actually, if you're watching this, you probably saw it in the intro, but I'm drinking today Southern Tears Irish Cream Stout. Uh... I stumbled upon Southern Tier last year. This is what cracks me up, Southern Tier from Lakewood, New York. Southern New York, I guess, I don't know. But they do all kinds of crazy flavors. Some good, some really good, some not so good. This is really good stuff. Um, I mean, if you like a stout and you like a sweeter stout, because it is very much an Irish cream. And as you can see, it is dark as night, and it's delicious. Now, how will it pair um, with some best full English tobacco, the Margate? It remains to be seen. We're still working on that. <clears throat> yeah, so we get this going again here. Unreal. So, <laughs> I just jump right into it. Number one, the Mule Town show was fantastic. Um, I'll go through and talk about all that in a little bit. Um, had a great time, picked up some things I'd love to show you guys and to share with you. Um, but I had the pleasure of meeting Richard the Dread Tiger. <clears throat> Such an amazing character. Uh, we met in passing, and then Ethan Parsimonious Piper introduced us, and we were able to kind of visit for a few minutes. On his way out of the show on Saturday afternoon, I'm sitting there visiting with with Ethan, uh, Chad Griffin, Dwight, the pipe smoking knife maker, knife maker, smoke piper. I'm kidding, Dwight. Um, but we had a fantastic time. Great meeting those guys. And, um, and Richard comes by 
and he's like, hey, do you have, do you have an extra pipe? And, uh, I did, because you don't go to pipe show with just one lesson learned. Friday night at the pre-show, I went down there, hung out with a bunch of the guys uh, uh, that I met, you know, through Instagram. Uh, Jeff Backwoods Piper, Tyler uh, the Ginger Piper, um, Georgia Piper, Jennings, uh, Tim. I hung out with a bunch of dudes and met a lot of t a ton of folks. And I only brought one pipe with me that night because I figured I would smoke a pipe. And they also had a representative from Crowned Heads, one of my favorite cigar brands, down there. And so I picked up probably a half dozen, six to eight sticks, I guess. And I figured I'll smoke a bowl and a pipe. And then I'll switch over to cigars. I never did get to cigars because there were just so many amazing tobacco blends just on the table. And people are like, here, have this, here, have that, smell this, look at this, look at that. Mind was blown. It was overload, sensory overload, Friday night and Saturday. So that's so what I say, lesson learned. <clears throat> um, always pack more than you think you're going to need. Uh, anyway. Richard Dread Tiger comes by, and uh, he stops and talks with Ethan and I for a few minutes on his way out. And he pulls out this crumpled um, tobacco pouch, probably from the early to mid-70s. And gosh, uh, some of you guys may know what it is. Ethan, if you remember, please let me know. It's like executive mixture or VIP something or another. The distinguishing factor on it was that it was a birch blend. I don't know exactly what that means. My first uh, exposure to it, um, apparently they soak some of the tobacco in, in birch juice or <laughs> birch water, birch sap. I don't know. Um, but it had just this really unique nose to it. The aroma on it was very unique. And, um, and so he's like, hey, if you've got extra pipe, fill up. And so I did, and I almost, I don't have it out here. One of the pipes I had with me in my bag was the uh, the Becker um, Dublin that my wife bought me for my birthday last year at the Mule Town Show. It's one of my favorites. It's a, it's a treasure. Um, but I hadn't smoked it yet that day. And so I pulled it out, and Ethan kind of gave me a look. You sure about that? <laughs> and Chad gave me a look. I don't know about that, Donnie. And I was like, a good call. Um, so I went back to this pipe because I'd smoked it first thing in the morning and it had, you know, it was just kind of hanging out in my bag. And it was one of the things that if it got ghosted by this executive birch mixture, whatever it was, you know, no big deal. So I will tell you that executive birch VIP, whatever it was, I wish I could find, I, I looked it up and I can't find it, but so anyway, um, it was the last bowl of the, the, the event that I smoked later on, on Saturday night. And so as I grabbed this one today, it was with purpose. The purpose was, see how ghosted it was. Not only do I still taste that birchwood blend stuff, unique, crazy, unique. I've never smelled or smoked anything like it. I can taste it. I can smell it. Um, Chad, Griffin Pipes kept calling it Grandma's Purse. Uh-huh. It was incredibly perfumey. Uh, and again, not bad. Um, just very different. Very, very different. And it is hanging around. And so it may, uh, and I, I chose the Margate because I figured it would be strong enough to kind of push through. It may take a couple of go-rounds in this one to, to get rid of Grandma's Purse mixture. Um, yeah, so it was an eventful weekend. Uh, I'll go ahead on the outset and say, if you haven't been able to make it out to a show, uh, find the local one near you. There is something special about getting together with brothers and sisters of the leaf, of the briar, um, of common interest, um, and, and just spending time together. It's one thing to know each other, again, through this lens. Um, 
through our posts and our likes. It's another thing entirely to sit down across from an artisan pipe maker and talk about their craft work. It's another thing entirely to sit down with someone um, and kind of go behind the curtain, so to speak, and be able to just to share real life. You know, there's certain things that I, I doubt most of us share completely via YouTube or Instagram or whatever other social media platform. Um, the fact of the matter is, the thing that, that, that I heard over and over throughout the weekend was about the community, the family, um, that there was just a sense of camaraderie and kinship. Um, the funniest thing was everybody who's gotten to know each other through uh, YouTube and Instagram or Facebook or whatever, there were several folks that walk up and go, and it wasn't even, hey, what's your name? Or wasn't introducing, hey, I'm Donnie. It was piping a pour because that's how we know each other. And so to, to kind of move beyond that to Ethan and Chad and, and, and Dwight and Richard and, and Kirk, you know, Captain Kirk, I got to, to visit with him. Fantastic dude, Kirk. Um, I hate that I missed you on that, uh, that Rat, Rat, Rat Ray's uh, account is mixture that you opened up. You'll save me some, right? Um, but yeah, I got to meet all the Indiana crew. Um, Stacy from, from uh, oh, I don't know how to say it. It's Beharin Works. She does great leather work and stuff. She's just a sweetheart. Kirk. Um, Zach from uh, Pistons and Pipes. Pipes and Pistons and whatever. Gosh, who else? Um, Nate and Nate and Justin. Uh, your pals from Pipes, Pours, and Pals podcast. Great dudes. Uh, enjoyed visiting with them for a while. Um, the thing is, I think I missed more people than I met. And I think so much of it was because we were all in that place of, man, I recognize that dude, but I'm not sure from where. I will... <laughs> um, Kentucky Highland Piper, Mark. I didn't know Mark's name. I just knew him as Kentucky Highland Piper. I woke up and introduced him, myself to him, and I think I scared him because because uh, uh, he just was like, I don't, I don't, he may not have recognized me, and that's okay. I didn't expect to be recognized, um, and so that's why I made it an effort to go introduce myself to folks to just say, hey. Uh, and and Kirk and I had a funny, had, had a good conversation, and, and laughed about the fact that we just got to the place of, hey, what's your handle? Hey, who are you? What's, what's going on? Um, uh, I got to meet a guy named Nate King. He, he, he dabbles with making pipes. Um, I think if he sticks with it, he could probably be pretty good one day. I uh, kid, man. Nate makes fantastic things, and he's just so much fun to hang out with and great to meet him. Uh, but, you know, but when I met him, when I was introduced to him, he was just like, I know your face. What's your handle? I was like, I'm Donnie, pipe and a pour. And so uh, there was a whole lot of that of, hey, where do I know you from? Um, which was fantastic. But again, just the, the, the sense of camaraderie, uh, the family, the community was just, it was just fantastic. It was great. And that's just the people, just the people, right? We haven't got into all the other stuff. Because like I said, the tobacco blends that were out there were just all over the place. Um, and people were so generous to share them. So Friday night, um, I got to try some Orlick Dark Strong Kentucky. I know it's discontinued now, which is a shame. Uh, I understand that HU um, has recreated it, and it's very, very similar. I got to see them side by side on Friday night. Um, anxious for when HU gets released here in the States. It's going to be a madhouse trying to get, get that stuff, isn't it? But if any of you guys happen to grab a, a 10 or 2 extra of that Dark Strong Kentucky, hit your old boy Donnie up. Okay, that was fantastic. Um, started out the, the the weekend trying some Frog Morton Cellar. Thank you, Jeff, Backwoods Piper. Funny thing is, is I met Jeff last year at the Mule Town Show, and he and I shared a bowl of that together. He shared that with me last year. It's the first time I'd had any Frog Morton of any variety. He says, honestly, Donnie, no one has touched that tin since you did last year at Mule Town. So I was the first one to open it again, and it's just, oh, Unreal, so good, but it is darkened and it is sweetened and it's just delicious. Uh, what else do we get into? Um, 
gosh, uh, Tyler, the Briar Ginger from Georgia, he opened up a tin of 10 plus year old McClellan something or another, you know, barrel staved, I, I forget the name. Uh, Tyler, if you happen to see this, remind me what it was because it was fantastic. You know, um, that, that weird executive VIP mixture, whatever that was, uh, again, was a unique experience that I, I wouldn't have gotten to try otherwise. Um, ah, Ethan, our good friend, Parsimonious Piper, enjoyed it. Uh, the Haunted Hatchards, rather enjoyed it uh, because I'm enjoying English blends all over them right now. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I've got two more weeks left in the English journey, um, and I'm enjoying it, you know. Uh, Beans316 had mentioned something in a recent video where he talked about that eventually Latakia blends just um, just end up running together. And I've mentioned that a time or two, and it's true. And I have an aphid in my beer. How dare you, drunkard. Um, yeah, but, but he's right. Um, after a while... All those Latakia blends do tend to run together. And, and as if you've been with me through this journey the last couple of, uh, of weeks and months, there's been a bunch of light ones and middle of the ground ones. And um, I, I mentioned to Truck and Piper Bob in a comment earlier today that, um, you know, I haven't even gotten to the Father Dempsey's and the My Mixture 965 and the Nightcap. And the Westminster, and the on, and the on, and the on. I haven't even got there, and here we are with two weeks left in March. Uh, so come to the end of March, I'm going to, uh, and granted, I took I took those, yeah, the, the handcuffs off of Englishes for the Mule Town show, because I did want to try whatever was out there available to me. Um, uh, but yeah, come the end of March, I'm going to switch over to something new. I'm not sure what that is yet. Stay tuned. We'll figure it out. Um... I may, just, I may dive back into Virginia's because I want to understand them better because I still don't get it. Anywho, that is what's up right now. Again, as I mentioned, I'm enjoying Margate right now. This came from my good friend Landrum. Um, he used to manage a couple of different cigar shops here in town. And they also had uh, did quite a bit of business in the you know with pipes and pipes tobacco. So he used to be a big pipe smoker as well. Got out of it because he just really enjoys cigars more, and as he said, uh, cigar, I light it, not to worry about it. Um, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. But I uh, met him down there, and he brought some goodies for me. Um, and I will go ahead and tell you, actually, if you've watched Brody Joe's video, got to meet Brody Joe and Truck and Piper, um, and just fantastic people, just fantastic. And, you know, what you see with Brody Joe in his videos is Brody Joe. He's always smiling. He's always laughing. He's always loving on people. And I love you for that, Brody Joe. Fantastic. Um, but I'm a terrible presenter because I took exactly zero pictures. And the extent of my video that I took can fit in right here. Zero. Um, it's a double-edged sword, right? It's a double-edged sword. And, and we talked about that. Several of us talked about the fact that on the one edge of it, you want to be present with the people in front of you, with that experience, with that time, the sights, the sounds, all of it. And it's hard to be present if you have your phone out trying to snap pictures and do videos. And I'm just no good at that. Some people are great at being able to step back videos and, and pictures and whatnot and then come back and be present. I'm not very good at that. So if you want to see video of sort of the experience and the people and the places and all that, go check out Brody Joe's video. Uh, Ethan got some footage. Um... Flat Cap and Lady Fire, they were there, got to meet them and, and their sons as well. Amazing, sweet people. They've got some good video out there about it. So uh, my apologies, y'all. I have nothing to offer you in that regard. Um, but actually, in, in one of Brody Joe's clips, you can see me in the background getting this haul from my buddy Landrum. He walks up, opens his bag, and starts handing me jars. Go. Frog Morton Cellar from 2013. Frog Morton on the Bayou, 2013. Gawith and Hogarth, Best Brown Flake, 2015. 
and I'm standing there with, I've just got all my little, um, my little pipe bag that, that, that my wife got me for our anniversary and, and for Christmas. And I was like, I'm gonna need a better, bigger bag. So I had to go out and get my bottle bag. Of course I did bring a bottle cause it's pipe and a pour, you know? Um, and if you saw, if you follow me at all on Instagram, I, I shared a, the, a couple of pours with some guys over lunch, which was fantastic. Um, that was the only tobacco that I got at the show. Obviously, I got some swag, got the t-shirt, the koozie, the hat, all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> oh, completely. <clears throat> it's inside somewhere. Um, but I did get a lovely handmade mug from my buddy Jeff, again, Backwoods Piper, on Instagram. He started he started uh, throwing clay, turning stuff last year. And just it's been, a, it's been amazing to watch his progression and his development. Uh, I, I count him as a friend. He's one of the first people I met in the pipe world. Uh, last year at the Mule Town show, he's one of the first people in the pipe world on Instagram that started following two years ago, whatever it was. But I got a, a, a beautiful kind of orangish green mug from him. I'll have to get out there when I do some coffee, is my poor. I stopped by and visited with um, uh, Garrick, Herrick. Dang it, I'm sorry. I apologize, buddy. The Georgia Piper. Really good dude. He's the one who, who let me sample some of that Orlick Dark Strong Kentucky. Um, he was hanging out watching BG Woodworks table for Brad because he couldn't make it. BG Woodworks. There it is. So I got an awesome pipe tray. I don't know what the red is in there, but red is my thing, right? I love red. As evidenced by the pipe. And so many other things. Um, so I picked up that tray from him because it was beautiful. I also picked up a five count pipe rack from Bradley's table as well. And it's just fantastic solid and it looks good with pipes sitting in it. Even better. Problem is, I'm going to need another one. At least one, maybe two. I don't know because as you guys know, the old birthday's rolling around next month. When I start my one year anniversary in the YTPC, my one year anniversary of presenting and doing videos. Um, dog, Levi's out here wandering around, he's bored, getting into stuff. Um, but I did happen to find, I went in there with a the budget. I may have gone over. Don't tell Mrs. Piping a poor, even though she is our CFO at the house. Um, but I did find a couple of pipes I couldn't resist. And so I went in there, a couple of things in mind. You guys know that I love paneled pipes. I don't know why, I just do. Um, I also do not have a Levat shape style. And I like those. And I wanted one. And I don't have one yet. So I was looking for those. And I don't have anything with bamboo. So Armchair Ed, this is for you. Guess who got a bamboo pipe? This guy. Here's the thing. I went over and visited with Jim at Lazarus Pipes. Instagram, follow him. Um, and I'm just looking around and I happen to see this little fella. Levat shaped, rusticated, bambooed stem. Um, and I picked it up and it was incredibly light and it just kind of called to me because I'd seen several. I saw some that were way out of my price range, but they were amazing. Uh, Kadesh, KJ Pipes, beautiful work. I mentioned Nate King, uh, Kevin Foster, fantastic to do with Foster Handmade. Beautiful work he's doing. Um, Jesse with Oliphant Pipes, got to meet and visit with him. Really good dude, he's a kid. Um, but um, Jim at Lazarus Pipes got these. Got this one and another one, and he made me a fantastic deal. This is the other one I picked up. Look at that. It's a sandblasted, paneled, kind of bent-ish Dublin. You can see the, the maker's mark right there, BJ. Made by Bajorne. Bjorni Nielsen. Um, 
as is this one. That one. Bajorni or Bajorne uh, Nielsen. Um, he was a Danish pipe maker, started in 1973. Unfortunately, he passed away suddenly in 2008, and none of the seven carvers in his factory wanted to continue his business, nor did his family. So that, and it's B-J-A-R-N-E. So that line of, um, of pipes is gone, um, but very, very well made. He started, um, he was sort of uh, inspired and started um, um, influenced by Preben Holm and actually recruited some of his pipe makers away from Preben Holm to start carving pipes with him. So I got these two beauties that I've not smoked yet. And you know what else? No one's ever smoked them. So they're at least prior to 2008 when they were made, never been smoked. And they're butamous. Butamous, they are. And I'm excited to give those a try because I, I find them very, very unique. And in this one, it checked all the boxes. Lavat and bamboo. So my very first Lavat, my very first bamboo. And I'm excited about that. I also went and visited with my old buddy, Rich, at Mad Pipes. Now, Rich has been, uh, I met him last year at the Mule Town Show, got a couple of estate pipes from him, uh, met him and his wife last year, got the chance to visit with him for a while um, this last weekend as well to catch up with him. He was just restoring pipes for a while. But when I talked to him last year, he'd started to kind of dabble and make his own. And I think he had six, seven, maybe eight of his own pipes that were there really nice ones um unfortunately I, I didn't i didn't pull the trigger on any of those he had a couple really nice um pencil thin shanks um the reinforced stainless steel through there and he told me how he made it and how he does it just amazing they're beautiful beautiful work so one day i'm going to have one of his made pipes but i went to visit him because you guys know for whatever reason again i have no connection i'm not french but um the Butz Chocan, um, French makers, sort of become my estate pipe know, fling. And as I walk up and start talking to him, he's like, I got three right here for you, Donnie. And the one in the middle just screamed. I don't know if you can see the sun just glaring off of that. It's like a neon yellow, y'all. And it typically would not make sense to me but it just, it screamed spring. Um, it's a rusticated, um, Butz Chocan, uh, Briere, 1845 is the shape, but it, I've looked at this shape from Butz Chocan for a while because it's just it, something about that shape that just fits. Um, but this is a beautiful, beautiful piece by him that he's cleaned up and restored. If we can get in there and see all this on top. But anyway, so those are my three takeaways uh, as far as pipes go from the Mule Town Pipe Show. The tobacco that I got, I gathered from a dear friend, Love You Landrum, um, who has given up pipes and handed those off to me. Uh, fantastic woodwork from, from Bradley Gant at BG Woodworks. So many amazing people. Uh, so again, if you've stuck with me this long, nearly a half hour, I'm going to have to cut some of this out, probably. But if you stuck with me this long, thank you. So much to share. Uh, so many good things going on in the pipe community and the YTPC. Uh, I am going to finish my bowl of Margate here uh, and then read a little bit. in the screw tape letters. If you're not over there following along with Ethan and Patter Piper, get over there, get you a book. Let's do this together. Let's have some exchanges in information and knowledge and insights. Uh, but until then, thank you guys for hanging out for a little while and joining me for a pipe and a pour. Cilantro, y'all. <laughs>